Hi everyone, I'm Michael Marshall with Miller Industries. Joining us today is Joseph Keen, and on this edition of Miller Tech Tips, we're going to show you how to update your MMO and wrapper screens, and Joseph's going to get us started on that. Thanks, Michael. Hi everyone, before we get started with the update process on the MMO and the Raptor screens, we're first going to go have to download some software to a USB drive. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's run in the office and get started. So now we're in the office. So what we're doing in here is we're going to go ahead and show you how to download the software updates for both the MMO system and the Raptor system. In order to do that, we're going to need a couple things. One, we're going to need a USB or flash drive to download the software too. We're also going to need a computer that's connected to the internet and has the ability to get on the MillerIND.com website to download the software. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through this process both using a PC computer and using a Mac computer for all the Mac users out there. First, let's start with the PC. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to plug the USB drive into the computer. With the USB drive inserted, you will first need to open your File Explorer window. In the File Explorer window, you need to locate your USB drive on the far left and right-click it. Select the Format option from the menu. In the Format option window, what you're looking for is the file system type. Select this drop-down under File System. Select the option for FAT32 and select Start. You will receive a warning letting you know that formatting this disk will erase all of the data. We're looking to have a blank USB drive to start this process anyway, so you'll need to select OK and continue. The process for formatting is very quick and you'll receive a notification letting you know when it's complete. And select close. Now what we need to do is go to our Google Chrome browser or our Microsoft Edge browser or our Mozilla Firefox browser. In this case, we are going to demonstrate this using the Google Chrome browser. So I'm going to open a new window in Google Chrome. And in the address bar, I'm going to type the website that we have to navigate to uh, to download those screen updates. So the address is https colon forward slash forward slash www.millerind.com forward slash r forward slash updates. And then press the enter key. Now you'll see all of the file systems. This is what's called an FTP server website. It's very basic and it just shows you all of the files that are here for, uh, for available download. In this case, we are just going to try to locate our specific file because we really only need one or two files depending on our system. I'm going to start with the MMO system. If you're operating an MMO and you're updating those screens, you're going to be looking for a file that begins with full underscore MMO underscore Gen 2. Once we found this file, we are going to right click and select Save Link As. Now what's important to note here is that you do not want to download these files directly to your USB drive. If you do, it will corrupt the files and you'll have to repeat the process all over again. So what we're going to do is just select our desktop and we're going to download those files to our desktop. Now what we can do is simply go to our desktop and we are going to find that file, which is right here. I'm going to right click on the file and I'm going to select Send To and then I'm going to select USB Drive Option. Now we're going to repeat the process for the Raptor system. Now I'm going to go back to our website. I am looking for the file name beginning with update dash full dash raptor and then either dash front or dash rear. Now we're going to need both of these files if you have a Raptor system. So what we're going to do now is we're going to right click on the first file, select save link as, and then we're going to select our desktop. Select the option for save, and we're going to repeat the process for the second file. Navigate to your desktop and you can easily see those files which are located right here. I'm going to select both of those files, right click again, I'm going to select send to and USB drive. Once complete the window will disappear, you can navigate to your USB drive and verify that all your files are there. Simply right click on the USB drive and select eject. Now you can now unplug the USB drive and now you're ready to go and update those screens.
And now that we've completed the download on the PC, we're now going to show you how to format your USB drive and download those same files but using a Mac. First insert the USB drive into the Mac. With the USB drive inserted into the Mac, you're first going to need to launch your disk utility. This can be located in your app launcher. Once you have the disk utility up and running, you're going to need to select your external drive. And we want to verify that this is a file system FAT32. Um, MS-DOS uh, FAT32 is how it will show up on a Mac. But if for some reason you went to the store, and again, this was not the case, um, you're going to need to format this disk. So what you're first going to need to do is to ensure that you are on the correct drive. Then select the Erase button at the top. In the Format Selection drop-down, you are going to select MS-DOS FAT. It will default to the latest 32 format. And then select Erase. You can close this window. Now that we have the drive formatted, we need to navigate to the Miller Industries Download Portal. We're first going to show you how to do this using the Google Chrome browser. And then second, we're going to go on to the Safari browser. They do operate a little bit differently. So we're, we're going to open a Google Chrome browser window. And in the address bar, we're going to type the address HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.millerind.com forward slash r forward slash updates and then press enter. We're going to be looking for the file beginning with the name full underscore MMO underscore Gen 2. This is the correct file for the MMO screens. So we are going to right click on this file, select save link as, and then we are going to select our desktop and then select save. What we want to make sure is that we do not download these files directly to the USB drive. Now open a finder window, navigate to your desktop. You can easily find it in the finder window. And now you can drag and drop the file to your USB drive. We are going to download the Raptor screen update files using the Safari browser with the Safari window open. We're going to navigate to the address bar and type in the address for the download website. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.millerind.com forward slash r forward slash updates and then press enter. You may notice that Safari cannot open the page. If that happens, simply click the refresh button. Select allow. Now select connect as guest and select the connect button. And now you can see all of your files. I tend to want to look at these in the list view so that I can see the full name of all the files. You're looking for the file name that begins with update-full-raptor and then the files for the front and the rear. And then simply dragging those over to our desktop. Once we've copied those files over to the desktop, we can navigate to the desktop, select both files, and drag them over to your USB drive. What's really important with a Mac system is that once you've copied your files, you need to first eject the drive by pushing the eject icon next to your USB drive in the Finder window. And that completes the download process for both the PC and the Mac computers. We now have the files on our USB drive, so now we're going to go back out to the wreckers and show you how to update those screens. So now we're back outside with the wrecker, and we're going to start with updating the MMO screens. To begin, you're going to make sure you have your USB flash drive and plug that into your USB dongle. After that, you want to make sure your USB dongle is plugged into port A of the screen. You want to listen for that snap to make sure it's completely in. Now that we have securely inserted the USB dongle, we'll want to press and hold the top left button on the screen while turning on the ignition switch to the unit. Once the screen shows the booting, you can let go of the button. Alright, so while this screen is booting up, it's going to show us all the files that we just recently installed on our flash drive. Uh, so using these up and down arrows, we want to select the proper file for the MMO system 
So once we select that file, you wanna hit the bottom right button twice to begin that download process. There's a progress bar that's gonna show us how the update is going. This should take about five minutes to complete the download process. Once the screen update is complete, you'll receive a green check mark indicating that the screen update has completed. After this, the screen will reboot. Once complete, it's going to move on to a series of setup questions. These setup questions may be different from each unit. You'll need to set up the default screen. We recommend that you set this to the switch panel page. The screen will reboot and go back to the switch panel page. After this is complete, you can go ahead and remove your USB dongle. This concludes updating the front MMO screen. So now that we're at the rear MMO screen, you'll notice you'll have to remove the screen to gain access to the port A where the USB dongle will be plugged in. The rear MMO screen is held in by four screws. Those screws can either be Phillips or Allen heads. We'll need to remove all four so that we can safely remove the MMO screen. So once we remove the four screws, you wanna put those in a place where you can get them back easily. Go ahead and pull the screen away from the panel. You'll notice this screen has plugs in the back of the unused ports. This will prevent any kind of contamination or moisture from entering the screen. You'll go ahead and remove the plug that's in port A. Now with that plug removed, go ahead and grab your USB dongle and flash drive and plug that into the port A. So the rear screen removed, you'll need an assistant. Your assistant will need to make sure to turn the ignition switch off. With the ignition switch off, you want to press and hold the top left button while your assistant turns the ignition switch to the on position. Once the screen shows the booting logo, you'll go ahead and release that button. The screen will continue to boot and then move on to the page that shows you the screen update files. You'll do this the same as you do the front, go ahead and select the proper file, which is already selected, and then press the bottom right button twice to begin the download process. You'll notice the progress bar on the screen will show you how much progress has been made on this update. And this update process usually takes around five minutes and after it's finished, the screen will reboot and then go back to the initial setup questions similar to the front MMO screen. There you'll select the display location, the screen will then reboot again. It'll ask you what kind of transmission this unit has. Does this unit have a rotator or not? And it'll also ask about the Whalem Freedom 4 light bar. It'll automatically select the module if available. The load moment indicator system. This unit has that you'll need to set up the default screen, which will be the switch panel. So after you answer the initial setup questions, the screen will reboot and go back to the switch panel page. Once you finish the download process, go ahead and move your USB dongle and flash drive. Don't forget to install the plug back into port A. And then you're ready to install the screen back into the panel. Now that we've completed updating the MMO screens, we'll move on to updating the Raptor screens. We're now in the cab of a Raptor system. With the USB drive plugged into the USB dongle, you wanna go ahead and make sure to plug the dongle into port A of the screen. Once you have plugged the dongle into the screen, press and hold the top left button while you're turning on the ignition switch. Once the screen shows the booting, go ahead and let go of the button. And the screen will then go into booting mode and pull up the files that are on the flash drive. Once those files are displayed on the screen, you'll want to use the second and third right buttons to toggle up or down to select the proper file. Once you get to the proper file, go ahead and press the bottom right button twice to begin the update process. Again, there will be a progress bar on the screen showing you the progress of the update and this will take usually around five minutes to complete. So once the progress bar has completed, you'll notice a green check mark indicating that the file has completely updated. After this, the screen will go to the booting screen 
and then go to the initial setup screen. The initial setup can be different based on your unit's configuration. So answer the questions appropriately. The last question on the initial setup is your default system screen. We recommend that you set this to the switch panel page. After selecting the default screen, the screen will reboot one more time and then move on to the switch panel page. After this is complete, you can go ahead and remove your USB dongle. Now that we have finished updating the front Raptor screen, let's go ahead and move on to the rear Raptor screen. We're now at the rear driver side Raptor control panel. This update process can be the same as the front screen along with the MMO screens. You can press and hold the top left button while someone turns on an ignition switch. But on the Raptor systems, we've incorporated a feature so you do not need an assistant to turn on the ignition switch. So you can start by going ahead and turning on the ignition switch. Go ahead and unscrew the USB port cover. Plug in your flash drive. From there, you wanna go ahead and select the blue gear at the center of the screen. Go to system settings, software update, and then start update. The screen will then reboot and pull up the files that are on the flash drive. Once the screen reboots, you'll use the arrows to the right of the screen to select the proper screen update. Once that screen update has been selected, you'll simply push the bottom right button twice. So once the update is complete, you'll get a green check mark and the screen will then reboot and go to the initial setup page. From the initial setup page, you'll want to select the display location. Does this unit have an automatic transmission? The winch configuration, which on this model is going to be the turret. And this particular unit also has one drag winch and it's not a roller. It has a Whalem Freedom light bar, modules detected. The incident management light head is the light head with the arrow stick, so yes on that. And there's no cameras connected to this display. The initial setup questions may be different based on your unit's configuration. After the initial setup questions have been answered, the screen will reboot and then go to the home screen as you see here. This completes the update on the driver's side Raptor control station. You can go ahead and remove your USB flash drive and install the USB port cover. Since this unit has a Raptor system, we'll have to update the passenger side as well. This will include downloading the full update to the screen and answering all the initial setup questions. Thanks Michael for showing us how to do those screen updates on both the Raptor and the MMO systems. If you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to your local Miller Industries distributor. They're a wealth of knowledge and they're ready to help. Thanks everybody for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our news feed to stay up to date on the latest news and info from Miller Industries. This video is for product demonstration purposes only and is not intended for training or instructional purposes. Situations vary and operators should rely on their own professional knowledge and safety procedures when conducting actual recoveries.